Eureka Valley is out there. The truck is just back there a little ways. We're heading up that way. There are stone walls and frames scattered around the area. This may be an abandoned shaft or it may be an old dwelling. Loretto was a copper mine. Mine shut down about 1930. Across the road are some ponds and other equipment from a brief operation in the 1970s that was strip mining the surface. You'd need a serious 4x4 to get up the rest of this. We wouldn't have made it very far at all in our little truck, so we parked at the bottom. Test Valley is in the middle of something of a heat wave, but we're far enough north and we are at about 4,700 feet here. I mean, it's high 80s, but it's okay. We'll see how hot it gets. We didn't get started till 10 to 11, but that's what happens when you drive all night. We didn't have much choice. I was so tired I forgot some details. We found this hike in the Hiking Death Western Death Valley book by Michelle Dijonet, I believe is the correct pronunciation. I'm gonna mispronounce it a bunch of times here. Roxana just spotted that, possibly a shaft opening. Okay, folks, so there's the other road that comes up, and wow, these roads are bad. We're approaching the town area, and we're gonna kinda skim over some of this stuff right now, but don't worry, we'll be back in a little bit. Kind of saving the best for last here. Somewhere around here is an 1800 foot deep shaft that's the deepest shaft in Death Valley. You can see already mining equipment, shaft, that would be an adit is what they call it when it goes in like that. And this was the closest thing to a town that Eureka Valley ever had. Somewhere out here there were tents and a small store. It said they never had a post office, but it was a pretty much an established town as close as you can get without having an actual post office. Oh, we're going to check out this over here in a moment. Yeah, huge thanks to Michael DeJanae's book for cluing us into the, that this even exists just off the road that we've driven by it a million times. There's an ore chute or something up there. That is one huge beam. The book is around 10 years old, so the details could be even older, and it seems like most of the stuff has actually washed down the hill a little bit. There's stuff down there. I suspect a fair amount of the wood has been burned as firewood by other people. But from around 1890 to 1930, this was a town. This is an old air compressor, probably diesel powered. And from what I've seen in other photos, this type of compressor had wheels on it and was probably pulled up here by mules. Compressed air would have been used to power various tools like jackhammers and, well, all kinds of things. The radiator you see would be used to cool the compressed air. There would have been another radiator on the other end, most likely, to cool the engine. I can't say for sure if it was gas or diesel, but most likely diesel. There's some evidence of copper ore. We might wander up there a little bit and see if we can't see anything else. So we walked a little further up. Back there's the shaft and everything. We came up a little further. You can see some major workings here and the road keeps going up and up. This is the area that was strip mined for a period in the 1970s and then that ore was taken across the road. Another mile uphill there are some talc mines. Definitely getting hot. I mean it's not super hot. We got a nice breeze but the sun is so bright. That's one thing. Humidity might be a little bit messier but it blocks about 40% of the sun. Even Sometimes even more where we are getting 90% of those rays right down on us. Well, that's disturbing. Piece of trash in here. I'm gonna have to get that. Probably blew in here for miles. You can see some of the processing area from here. The low grade ore recovered here in the 1970s was taken across the road there to be processed.
Here we can see some exposed copper ore. This is another area I suspect people have taken chunks because the book indicates there was a lot of visible copper here. I wouldn't call this a lot. It's some. We'll take in the view for a moment and then let's go get a look at those shafts. Yeah, that's a deep tunnel. I don't even want to look. We'll, we'll look in it, but we don't go in mines. It's dangerous. This shaft may have been part of the mine, but I forgot to notice the door on it. it this was the mine and town safe. That's where they stored the pay. Roxana, are you crazy? Go ahead, show them what you were just doing, leaning over that thing. Careful, please. Alright, let's see what we've got here. Well, Roxana's scouting my side. What are you saying? It looks like it, what, is it going to cave in under me? <laughs> just below you, yeah, it dips. The ground dips. Oh, right into there. Yeah. We're going to try and look over. This may be the one. It said in the book, if I toss a stone in here, we won't be able to hear it hit the bottom. There's lead. Yeah, it bounced off a ledge. We'll try again. So there's the winch. Cable still goes down the mine. All the way out. The cable elevator support structure rusted and crashed into the shaft. Yeah, this is really exciting. Most of these things are covered up, but this one is not. Holy cow, folks. I don't know what you can see down there. All right. This will take some doing, but now we're using the hiking stick monopod. We'll lean out and see if we can get any sort of a view. Very difficult to tell. Might notice the broken beam there and the little ore car rails. Yeah, I'm getting a decent, I'm getting a decent idea of it's a long way down. Unbelievable. Now, if you come out here, you might see something like this and think, oh, I could throw that in. Please don't, because that's another little piece of history. There's lots of rocks. I'm going to stand on this solid piece of concrete here. Okay, I was trying to tell you all when the thing was hitting and when it stopped hitting, and it did, this just isn't working. In a second here, I'll do it the right way, and I'll say, last hit, the last time I hear it hit, and... It's still echoing. It hasn't hit the bottom. That's just the last time I heard it hit. Okay, we'll take a nice chunk and drop it straight in from here. Check this out. Last hit. That's a long way down. Well, that sure was a lot of fun. And the car is right down there, and that's about it. That's the pavement. It's just off Big Pine Road. I strongly suggest picking up Michael Dijonet's book if you want to do this hike yourself. Just look up Loretto. Uh, bug spray is a good idea. There's not mosquitoes, but the flies will just hover around you like mad if you don't have some bug spray. Other than that, Really rewarding hike for it, it's 500 feet up, but you know 0.7 maybe 0.9 with the little extra added in there each way And at this elevation even in the warmer weather not a bad hike. And we had a lot of fun All right folks, we'll see you soon